uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you for coming to my talk. I think you probably have uh, listened to a lot of talk about details of uh, Flink and also about the ML application on top of it. And it's probably different from uh, a lot of other talks. Uh, it's also might be a good time to learn like how Flink integrates with other data system. So I'm here to try to uh, share like what we have been uh, what have been doing with uh, integrating Flink with Pulsar for elastic, elastic data processing. And uh, a basic, a brief introduction. Uh, I'm, I'm coming here more from uh, Pulsar community, try to represent uh, the community on how we have been doing, uh, working with, uh, on integrating uh, Pulsar with Flink. And uh, my background is I work uh, for Twitter in Yahoo before. In, in general, I'm interested in uh, any technology around event streaming. Uh, so today, uh, I'll, I'll give a an, an, uh, simple in introduction what is POSA. And uh, Flink has done a good job on how unifying the, the, the computation of batch in, uh, stream processing. And I, I would like to share the, the similar like, view on how POSA view about data and also how, what, what kind of uh, mechanism provided by Pulsar for elastic data processing. And uh, we'll talk about uh, how Flink integrate with Pulsar. And uh, there, there's already some of the production use case that uh, uh, Pulsar user already using uh, Flink to processing the data in their production. I will also share one of the use case. Uh, so what is Pulsar? I think, uh, I'm not sure how many people have heard about Pulsar before. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so but just uh, for a simple word describing and putting uh, Pulsar in an area with other project is PubSub Messaging. And you can see uh, there's a lot of projects around this space, like ActMQ, RevMQ, Kafka. Uh, in China, there's also uh, uh, MQ from uh, Alibaba called RockMQ and uh, there's POSA. So most of the projects are coming from uh, Apache Software Foundation. And you know, uh, <laughs> uh, Apache Software Foundation is a foundation of all the big data technology. And uh, a simple sentence to describe POSA, uh, how it differentiates from uh, traditional messaging technology is, uh, it's a flexible PubSub messaging, but it's different from the traditional uh, PubSub messaging is it's backed by a durable log storage. So it comprises two parts of the, the, the data. One is messaging, one is uh, storage. So it's not just a simple pipe. Um, so a very simple concept, it's, uh, it's very similar as other pub sub messaging. So you have a topic that is the entity of your data. You have producer produce the data to the topic and you have consumer consuming the data from the, the topic. It's very like, well known uh, pattern. Uh, but it's different from most of the uh, messaging solutions is uh, from day one, it's built uh, for multi-tenancy. What does that mean? It's, uh, you can simply think about it's a hierarchical topic management. So on top uh, of the, uh, on, at the top level, you have the concept called property. Uh, in our, our way, you can call it tenant, which uh, in a large organization, it can be a, a department or a group and under uh, property or tenant, you have multiple namespace. Uh, namespace you can use for categorizing all your topics in, uh, for a certain service. And uh, within the namespace, you can create as many topics as you want. So this provide a way you can uh, provide uh, resource isolation. So basically you can give uh, any resource quotas at tenant level or namespace level, or even in, uh, if you want to specify in the topic level. So in this way, you, you can, as a platform uh, maintainer, you can onboard uh, as, as easy as, as you can. You can just connecting, uh, so all the, all the teams can just dump the data into the, the same cluster. You can share data between uh, teams, but you have the control about how many resources they, they want to consume. You have also all the permission and uh, access control uh, you can grant for different uh, teams. So this is uh, kind of different from what you might have been seeing in the other uh, PubSub messaging systems. And uh, one of the interesting uh, model that Pulsar is providing for uh, messaging model is uh, it, 
it provides a flexible messaging model that unifies queuing and streaming. Uh, in terms of queuing, is uh, you can think about it's a work queue. Uh, it's the, the pattern is usually applied in the online service, like in uh, transaction processing, in uh, notification deliver, and the uh, payments uh, uh, processing. So this is work queue. And uh, in that area, you, you have a lot of uh, work queue solutions like WebMQ, ActMQ, uh, traditional JMS style uh, MQ. But uh, the other way is, uh, uh, is streaming. It's, you can think about streaming is more about uh, ordering, processing the, the messaging in the queue. And uh, a typical, uh, uh, the most popular streaming uh, messaging system is Kafka. And Pulsar is trying to provide the, the uh, a unified messaging model for both queuing and streaming. What does that mean is uh, all the data going into Pulsar, it will just sit in, uh, in, in the Pulsar topic, which is a single copy of the data. Uh, it can be act as the source of choose of all your data. But your online service can consume the data in, in a queuing uh, process. And uh, in uh, your analytics workload or your ML workload can consume the data in order, which is a streaming mode. So this kind of uh, provide the flexibility for different team using different uh, consumption model to uh, consume the data. So this is uh, what parts are different, uh, is different from other messaging system. And uh, arch architecture wise, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, it's, uh, it's a messaging system backed by uh, storage. So it provides two layers. Then one layer is the traditional broker, and the other layer is a storage layer. And when you, uh, when architecture the uh, messaging system in two layers, you get, uh, you get a lot of benefits. Like basically, you're moving all the storage into a central uh, storage layer. So all the brokers become steady. And when a broker crash, you can just simply switch the traffic in the ownership of the topics to other brokers. So you, can, you get uh, instant failure recovery. And uh, because when moving out the, the storage out of a broker, when a, a storage node crash, it doesn't directly impacting uh, all the consumers and uh, producers because you have other copies serving the data. So, uh, when separating the, the serving in the storage, you get uh, independent scalability. When you want to add more consumer, you can just drop more brokers. You want to keep data for much longer duration, you just drop bookies. And also you get uh, balance free. You don't need to worry about when I'm adding more nodes, I need to rebalance the data, like rebalance the partitions across the, the cluster. Uh, because that is an expensive operation, it usually go wrong when uh, the cluster go big. So this is kind of a different way. So this is kind of uh, present the uh, three different uh, perspectives that Pulsar is different from other uh, PubSub messaging. But going back to the topic today is we are talking about data processing. And uh, Flink, uh, tried, uh, Flink does a great job on unifying batch and streaming on computing our API layer. And I'm, I'm more talk, uh, we are more thinking about the, how we want to present the data in the data processing world. So uh, let me share how we think about data. So uh, back into uh, ba batch processing world is I think in the batch workload, the default storage system is HDFS. Uh, so a brief uh, overview about how the HDFS uh, looks like is basically you have a bunch of files, and each file divides into blocks, and the blocks is distributed across all the data nodes. And when a batch job is running, you can launch as many uh, workers or uh, tasks, uh, you, uh, process the blo blocks uh, in parallel. So this is kind of the, ba uh, the batch world. In the streaming world is people thinking about the data, it's in motion. So all the data going into a queue are going into a, a stream. And uh, all your uh, streaming job that is consuming data out of the queue are the streams. So uh, this is kind of the two different uh, worlds. And uh, in the stream world, uh, the most popular uh, solution is Kafka. 
and it has educated uh, a lot of people about how you thinking about the, the data in an append-only log or append-only streams. So this is uh, the, the batch in a stream world. And uh, Flink, uh, when Flink viewing the computation, it views uh, all the computation is stream computation. Batch processing is just the, uh, a special case of stream processing. And when we think about the data, so we're also thinking about data is also uh, infinity streams. And the batch is just a special case of the, uh, 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 the, the batch data is just a static data of the uh, part of the streams. So uh, in other words, to describe PULSA, it's a segmented stream. What does that mean is you have two parts, one is stream, and the other is segmented. So uh, let's go deep into how uh, uh, PULSA organize, organize the data. So basically you have a logic concept. Uh, you have producer produce the data into topics, and you have consumer consuming data. Uh, so all the data is kind of append in, uh, as the events arrive, so it's all in the time order. So uh, underneath, the, a, a topic is uh, partitioned into multiple partitions, similar as, uh, as Kafka. So you, you, get, uh, you can increase the number of partitions or you can shrink the number of partitions as, it, as the traffic goes. Uh, underneath of individual partition, uh, so uh, PULSA divide the, the partition into multiple segments. And the segment is stored in the storage layer. And so you can spread across, uh, 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 spread your one partition across the whole cluster. So if you just take a look at a single partition, that is kind of the, an infinity streams. And, and in infinity streams, you, can, you have producer producing the data into streams, and you have consumer consuming data from streams. And you have the data segmented into multiple segments, and that you get the parallelism uh, of processing data in parallel, because you have multiple segments. And so I kind of call this as a segment of streams, is you have logically, you have uh, streams, you have a traditional pub sub model consuming data or producing data. Uh, underneath, you get this uh, distributed uh, segment. And so I call this segment streams. You might already heard a lot of systems like uh, PULSA. Uh, Twitter has an internal system called EventBus, and EMC has a system called Pervega. Uh, they kind of build uh, using the same similar con concept. And also, uh, interesting, uh, all the projects are kind of built based on Apache Bookkeeper. But they are kind of building uh, in a different way. Uh, Pulsar and EventBus are very similar, are close to each other. They use Bookkeeper directly as the segment store. But Pervega is a bit different. Uh, it uses Bookkeeper as, the, uh, as a, a giant journal, and, but they build their own uh, concept of segment. But they all share, uh, all share the same idea of segment, segment streams. Basically, you have the ability to stream, streaming the data, but uh, internally, all the data is segment into segments. You get the uh, parallelism for batch processing. So that is the what I call segment streams, but you, you can call it a different way. <laughs> uh, uh, so once you have these kind of uh, segment streams, uh, let's look, take a look at uh, what would be the kind of access pattern in data processing world. So you have uh, stream processing, you have batch processing. All these processing basically uh, would have three access patterns. One is uh, you have the data arrive, uh, com keep coming and it getting append into the end of the streams. And you have the uh, Pub sub uh, model accessing data in the streams, so you kind of doing a telling read in the, in the streams. And also, you, you, if you want to do batch processing, you need to go back in time. You, need, you want to process the segments in parallel, so this is kind of the catch up read. So, yeah, the write append the data uh, to the end of the streams, and telling read, telling read the latest data which consuming the, the most recent data. And catch up read, you, you want to catch up the data from uh, any, any point 
any, any, any position in the streams. So uh, catch up read is more useful in uh, a lot of like ML processing because you want to reprocess data to build models. And uh, the, the telling read is you want to uh, get the latest data, like you want to apply the data into your model, or you want to uh, consume the latest data to uh, uh, do uh, edge prediction or uh, edge targeting. So uh, give, give uh, because, because Parsa is usually like, uh, people usually compare uh, uh, Parsa with Kafka, and I will use the, the, the access pattern in, uh, in the data processing to, uh, to see what, is, what, what are the difference. And uh, in the other side, uh, in the left side is the parser, in uh, the right side is Kafka. So uh, on right workload, you uh, in parser, all the writes going to broker, and the broker will write in parallel to your storage node. So you get two run trip for writing the data to keep uh, multiple copies. In Kafka, it's similar is you have the, uh, so all the writes going to a leader broker. And uh, you have follow brokers that replicate data from uh, the leader. So from the network bandwidth or run trip perspective, they are quite similar because uh, if you want like at least two or three uh, uh, copies, you need to do at least two uh, network run trip. So it's kind of similar. Um, for telling read, it's also, so in PASA, you always go to the broker directly because broker catch all the latest data. In Kafka, you go to the leader bro broker to read the data. And uh, for catch up reads, uh, there's multiple ways in uh, PASA. You can go to broker and broker load the data from, uh, from storage node, or you can bypass the, storage, uh, bypass the broker read directly from storage. And uh, in Kafka, you have to go back to the leader broker again. So I, I think from, if you separate all these uh, different work together, you will see uh, uh, Parser doesn't have any uh, like huge uh, difference between, uh, from, from Kafka. But the most interesting thing is when you put all the work, workload together, you'll find uh, things will become funny. Is uh, in Parser, because it's separating the, the, the serving from a storage, so you kind of isolate the pub sub messaging uh, of the streaming workload from the batch workload very naturally because all the catch up read can go directly to the storage node. And in, in Kafka is, uh, at least right now, all the all different kind of workload, you have to go to one single uh, leader, uh, leader broker. And if you mixing all the workload together, the, the, the workload, uh, the access, pat access, uh, access pattern might become very uh, tricky to tune. So that is the difference. But I think in Kafka, there's uh, uh, ongoing efforts to try to uh, make the read uh, also be able to read from follower. So it's also interesting to see how um, technology are evolving in different projects. So, this will just give you an idea how uh, PORSA provide uh, the capability to handle different workloads. And going back to how the PORSA view the data, it's basically it's an uh, infinity streams with uh, segment into multiple segments. And right now, all the segments is stored in Bookkeeper. But because it's segment into segments, it has all the a capability to distribute all your data across the, the cluster. So when you uh, want to increase the, the, storage, the, the storage size, you can just simply add the storage node because the new segment will just go into the new storage, uh, storage node. But the abstraction is interesting is because you have an abstraction uh, segment. So the, your storage node doesn't, has to, doesn't have to be bookkeeper. It actually can be any cloud storage. So that, that in that way, we, uh, in POSA 2.0, we introduce a concept called tier storage. That means uh, when you keep appending data into streams, 
you uh, have the new newest data, but you are, all the old data became all the old segment became old. So you want to keep if you want to keep all the data in a single bookkeeper cluster, you might need to pay uh, extra cost. But in cloud, you have a lot of object storage, uh, this archive storage. You can offload your uh, old segments into tier storage. So that is the, because the segment streams, the segmented streams provide the concept of segment, you can uh, simply move offloading the segment into tier storage. And that's what, what we did in Pulsar called tier storage. And there's an offloader running on the broker side that it basically decide when I want to offload the segment. Uh, it can be size-based or it can be time-based or it can trigger by uh, admin operations. And what it, what it does is basically copy a segment to tier storage and delete it from bookkeeper. So all your data will be set in tier storage and you can keep it for much longer duration. And uh, when you want to access the data, uh, if you access from broker, uh, broker know how to reload data back to broker. Or if you want to access the data by passing the broker, you can read the segment directly. So this, this would give, uh, uh, when, when parts are running in cloud, it, it can be naturally integrated with a lot of cloud storage. And so this is kind of the process view on how we want to provide the unified view on the data. So it's an uh, infinity streams. You can consume the data using traditional PubSub messaging model for your streaming workload. You can access the segment uh, directly for batch, batch processing. So uh, when you're running uh, data processing uh, jobs or tasks on PASA, it basically view the, the whole streams as either unbound streams using PubSub messaging model to, to continue consuming data from the streams. Uh, you can view the, the, the stream as a, a bounded streams or static set of segments. Then you can read directly, uh, up, process the, the, the seg seg segments directly. And so PULSA is, uh, this is the way how we view the data in PULSA, but when integrating with PULSA, it, uh, with, with Flink, it became uh, very interesting is uh, you have the ability to provide the, the to support streaming workloads uh, through streaming connector. Uh, you are able to uh, provide batch uh, workload uh, through the batch source connector. And POSA also have the built-in schema you can uh, integrate uh, with Flink so you can access the data in a structured way so you can uh, use uh, Flink Circle to query the data in, in POSA. And also, because POSA has the, the, uh, the stream and also the segment storage, the, which, which is powered by Bookkeeper, so you can also use POSA to store all the states in, in, uh, in POSA. So uh, when we in integrate uh, Flink with POSA, we kind of thinking that Pulsar would be providing the unified view of your data, and Flink provide the unified view of your computing and also the API. And based on the this goal, we have done a lot of integrations. The but mostly are kind of in the connector there. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the integration first. So basically. Right now, the integration is already done. It has been using a lot of in, uh, in process user is uh, stream source to stream sync. So basically you can build a, stream, a streaming source and then uh, do the processing by Flink and then write the result back to uh, POSA. And the other way is you can have a streaming source, but uh, when you write data, you can uh, write data back into a streaming table sync. And there's also a, a batch sync for you dump the all the, if you do the batch processing, you can also dump the result back to the to POSA. So this is the, uh, right now all the integration are done in the connector layer. And uh, I'm happy to share one of the, the, the 
Pulsar user who has been using Pulsar and Flink in production, uh, which is uh, Jopping.com. Uh, probably uh, uh, job, not a lot of people know about Jopping, but it's, it's a Chinese in internet company. It's one of the largest online recruitment service provider. So it provides the, the, the job seeker a, conf, uh, a resume service so people can upload their resume and then seeking jobs in this platform. And also it provides a professional HR service to a lot of uh, clients. And so uh, one of the use case in jobbing is it provides uh, the job search. So the jobs, I think the web page is in Chinese, but <laughs> it's basically a search box that you can type in uh, uh, the, the job you're interested in. You can search all the, uh, the jobs from different providers. And what jobbing used uh, for, uh, use Flink in Pulsar, is powering the whole uh, search pipeline. So uh, in the beginning, you have all these call online service, people can upload the, their resume, uh, uh, the, the enterprise can upload their uh, job description, and all this data is going into uh, uh, a topic, a job topic in, in store in Pulsar. And there's a bunch of the Flink job that is running and also processing and building index. Some of the serving data is writing back to edge base for serving the results. And the other stuff might going into a second tier of the, the topic. The, these are the, the topic used for indexing. Uh, what does what does that mean is there's another service that consuming from the index topic to build a full text, uh, full text search engine. So there's, there's a deep uh, pipeline uh, at the, uh, after in index topic, but basically the whole uh, uh, job search pipeline is powered by uh, Pulsar and Flink. And this has been uh, used uh, in uh, Jobbing's production for uh, for a while, and this metric is uh, from the the, the the data going into Pulsar. It's about six billion messages per day, but about uh, three billion messages is processed by uh, Flink for building the search indexing. So uh, this gives you an idea how Pulsar view the data and how the uh, how what we have done on integrating Pulsar in uh, Flink, and one of share one of the production use case. I would like to share what the future work items that we are working on uh, integrating Pulsar in Flink. One is uh, we want to integrate, we want to uh, fully support the batch story, uh, so allow Flink to read the segments in parallel and bypassing brokers, and also can access the tier storage directly. The other one is Pulsar has a uh, built-in schema. It uh, provides different type of schema, like uh, struct schema, pr primitive uh, types. And also it supports all the schema evolution and also uh, versioning in, in the streams. So you can handle the schema changes in the streams. And we want to uh, deeply integrate uh, Pulsar schema with Flink. So, uh, Flink can, uh, Flink Circle can directly query the data in, in Pulsar. And the other one is uh, what I talk about, mentioned before is we want to uh, try to start the, the Flink state uh, a segment into Bookkeeper. So this will provide um, a convenient way for people, uh, if people already run Pulsar uh, in production, uh, uh, they also want to run stateful job in, in Pulsar, then uh, you don't need to set up additional uh, system to, to store your state. And this is the way how we're thinking about the, the uh, data processing is basically uh, Pulsar view the data as an infinity streams and it's segment into segments. And uh, for the real time part or streaming part, it's consuming the data in Pulsar uh, model. And for the historical data, for the batch processing, it access the data in, in parallel. I think it aligns with the, the Flink's uh, processing model uh, very, very well. 
and we hope we want to continue the uh, developer on the integration between Flink and Pulsar. And uh, some of the work are still uh, on pro on progress in progress, and we would like to share uh, more details when they are ready or uh, they are after they are on production, maybe in the next uh, Flink forward Flink forward event. And this is my talk, and uh, there's a bunch of the information about Pulsar community. And if you are interested, you can also follow our uh, Twitter handle, and or you can ask questions in mailing list, our Slack channel. And yeah, if you have any question, I think it's time for question. Yes, We've got time for a few here. Uh, so just one question regarding the current uh, source connector. From what I understand, it uses like um, Pulsar managed, managing the offsets of where you're reading. Yeah. It's not using like the reader interface. Yeah. Is there plan, so essentially that means it's at least once. Is there plans to transition that to eventually be um, a more Flink style managed state so it, we get exactly once guarantees with Pulsar? Yeah. So uh, right, now, uh, right now the integration is using the shared subscription. So uh, the one of the advantage of that is you are able to scale up the uh, the number of the uh, consumption uh, when you want. But the the drawback of that is uh, the processing is out of order, and also you can only get exact oh, sorry <laughs> at least once. It's not you cannot get exactly once. And uh, there's actually there's a working item. Uh, I think uh, I'm not sure it's Zhao Ping or who in the community is already working on using a reader to um, uh, uh, process data to get uh, the, what was it, the, the checkpoint in snapshot stuff to get exactly one. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for the talk. So question about the tier storage, they kind of new for me. So if you in with the pulsar with the with the tier storage wouldn't that if without the bookkeeper is that what it's actually proposing if that's the case then wouldn't that reduce uh, or take away the the automatic rebalancings for the the data or do you move it or, or is it already in the, the logic already in the pulsar instead of the bookkeeper because i thought that that's the key of automatic rebalancing for pulsar coming from uh, thank you so uh so the uh so the question is, uh, is the bookkeeper handle or the uh, tier storage stuff? So right now, the logic is in the, in the broker layer. Uh, so th because the, it's kind of, ideally it should be in the bookkeeper layer, but it depends. Because uh, in some of the use, use cases, is if you're done in the broker layer, you can actually uh, get rid of bookkeeper uh, completely. So uh, right now what we provide, the, all the tier storage is the read-only segment store. So you read the data from the tier storage, but the write stuff is handling by the broker. But eventually, you can even uh, implement a, a, how to say that, a, a writable uh, segment store, so you can replace bookkeeper. Uh, and but the the drawback of this approach is it uses a lot of bandwidth in broker, but it, it it's kind of uh, make not fully utilize the uh, the bandwidth in in, in bookie. So there was a discussion of thinking about how we probably just moving the tier storage part into Bookkeeper. So uh, a Bookkeeper would automatically uh, handling all the uh, data tiering. And in that way is Bookkeeper, you can think about it, it would become a, a journal of the of, of, of Pulsar, but it would become a cache for, the, uh, for your for cloud storage for your hot uh, warm data. You mentioned that uh, the data once it is moved to tier two, uh, you know you don't need to go through the broker, right? You can directly access the data from, yeah. you know Hadoop, sort of you know backend. Yeah. In that case, how the client knows, you know, what are those metadata, like you know how it can read, uh, you know, reason about okay. the data. Great. Uh, <laughs> so um, so basically, when uh, this happening, it, uh, so all the broker it has an admin or restful service that provide access uh, admi administration operation to the topics. So you can get go through the RESTful uh, 
endpoint in the broker to get the list of segments uh, from the uh, uh, from, uh, from from broker. Broker will tell you the the list of segments, and uh, each segment it has the metadata is it it's either a segment or a ledger in Bookkeeper. Uh, if it's already offloading to uh, an object storage, uh, it will contain the information. Typically, it's a URL that uh, where is your object store, sorry, where is the segment is stored. And then you can use the, uh, uh, the tier storage API, then it would find the, the, the right uh, plugin to read the data out of the tier storage. But one of the problem of this is we're still working on is you are bypassing the whole uh, security that Pulse already provide for you. And one trick of doing that is uh, you can save a lot of bandwidth, but you don't have the security stuff when you're bypassing. So we are still working on how we can uh, make sure the client or the, the job can still be honored to the, the whole security system that POS already provides. Yeah. I think we have time for two more questions. Yeah, so this might be actually related to exactly one uh, semantics that you already talked about, but uh, does Pulsar support uh, transaction processing like Kafka or? Uh, so, uh, the question is, does POSA support transaction processing or the transaction like Kafka? Uh, uh, POSA right now uh, support the item potent producing. So if you try to produce the, the messages uh, uh, using a, a, a config uh, sequence ID, you can do item potent producing, but it's going to be one partition. And there was already a, a Pulse uh, improvement proposal, I think it's 31, is discussing uh, adding the transaction support in, in Pulse. That would support, you are able to produce multiple events or multiple messages into multiple topic in partitions in a transaction. But not only that, it would, uh, because Pulse's uh, acknowledge model is different from uh, Kafka. Kafka is commit the commit the offset so in, in, in Kafka, the transaction is, you uh, it guarantees the production of the data and also commit the offset in, in single transaction. And Pulsar is doing the similar thing, uh, but uh, it also has to handle individual acts. So you are able to say, I, I, I consume one event, and then uh, I pro uh, process the event, it generates multiple events, and I make sure the producing the multiple events and also acknowledging that individual event uh, happening in one transaction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, last question. Last question. Uh, can you explain more on the indexing topic you mentioned in the uh, Jopin's uh, example? Uh, okay. So, um, okay. uh, actually, the index topic, uh, it's basically there's a full, uh, full text search in engine that is consuming from the index topic. So, uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure about the data that is stored in the index topic, but it, it basically, the data is consumed by, an, uh, what's it called? There's an open source full text index engine called Lucent, is it not so? Lucene? Lucene, yeah. I, I think it's the, 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 the full text engine is based on that solution. I think it's a customized solution that it consuming from uh, the index topic and do the indexing. So, it, so all the data is once it going into the pipeline and it would be indexed in real time. There's no like bad, batching stuff and uh, like shipping uh, the whole batch into, uh, into the index engine. Yeah. Cool, thank you. All right, thank you, CDA. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you.